Um, ah, what is what that noise? What the is that noise? What is this? Oh, looking what is happening? What is happening? No, 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 run away, away, run away, run away. I don't even Are have... you seeing this? Have... Yes, I was inside of it, Nicholas. Oh god, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die because you wanna be a hero. Oh, god. I got ah! it! Okay, and what is the most? Yeah, job? look at Nothing. us. Nothing. Oh. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna get the strip so much while we play. <laughs> Hey, it's Steffi B from Five Mid Mornings, and I am joined today by Nick Van J, who you might recognize from TikTok or pretty much any of your social medias, Twitch. I am probably one of his number one stands. <laughs> he is on my For You page. When I say multiple times a day, I genuinely mean multiple times a day. I don't know how you do it, Nick. I actually paid TikTok oh, okay. to put it on your <laughs> FYP. I was like, please, I need Stephanie to know. You are going to be going through absolute torture while we attempt to play Fortnite together. I just want to qualify this by saying that I'm not a Fortnite player. I downloaded this specially to play with Nick. I'm going to let you in <laughs> on a secret, Steph. Fortnite is probably the game at which I am the worst. Um, and the only reason we are playing what? it together is because I decided it's a game that <laughs> works for us because you can play it on any console mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. someone on any other console. Okay. Uh, <laughs> should we get the game started and then we can Shall jump we? into the questions? Where did you go? Okay, there's people and I'm gonna die. Oh. Uh, Oh my god, what, is, what are you doing? What's happening? What is happening? Just, I'm just destroying lights. No need to stress. I'm gonna try. Got him. Yeah. Let's start off with um, the first question. I think it's the one that okay. everyone probably wants to know, which is how did you get started in content creation? I'm sure you get asked that a lot. I started Vine and I just really, really enjoyed it. And I had a great time with it and I amassed. I think a following of like four and a half thousand. And then it wasn't until a few years later when I met my, um, my ex-boyfriend. He completely rebuilt the inside of an old Mac tower, which was very impressive. Um, and he set up my very first streaming setup. But when the lockdown started, I was like, you know, why don't I start TikTok? Because that was like the thing, you know, and I thought I'd really like to use TikTok as a way to um, supplement a different demographic to my streaming community because I thought I could really, you know, make it a difference for a lot of queer gamers that way. Because a lot of my streaming community is um, based on, you know, queer inclusion. And I realized that there was a niche for um, you know, educating people on a lot of social issues that I just assumed a lot of people knew. What the frick is this? <laughs> Can you do that dance in real life? <laughs> no. Why am I attracted to this? <laughs> Why am I attracted to Rick Grimes doing this? So a lot of people probably don't know this. You either don't know this because you're not a gamer or you don't know this because you are a gamer, but you're not a queer person. Um, women might relate to this in a lot of ways, but gaming spaces, um, gaming social spaces, especially like the online gaming spaces are incredibly hostile. Listen, whenever I play PUBG, I try and play like with my mic off because yep. if you play with your mic on, as soon as they hear you're a girl or a woman, a woman or whatever, yeah. uh, it completely changes. If somebody like talks shit about you for being gay, or they talk shit about you for being a woman, or they abuse you for being a woman. That doesn't stop once you put the game down. That that exists in your everyday life, and gaming is supposed to be an escape from that. I went through a good two, three week period where every single game, something just absolutely disgusting was being said to me. And I'm like, yeah. this is supposed to be for fun. I'm supposed to be doing this for fun, and this isn't fun anymore. There's this weird assumption that queer people and women and people of color are obligated to educate people on their narrative and yeah. it's like my guy google is free oh my god there's a raptor that's on my ass i'm literally having a jurassic park moment these two raptors have cornered me in a building why are they dinosaurs really oh my god do you want to talk about growing up a little bit um you know in zim uh, maybe even if you want to share your coming out story was that something yeah that... i grew up in a small rural town in zimbabwe called victoria falls like it is a, a tourist destination 
but there's like there are a lot of kind of religious centric um communities okay. that are very evangelical and hardcore okay. um and so i grew up with a lot of people whose platform was always gay is wrong and gay is a sin i don't know oh, why wow. that was like the that was like the intense focus meanwhile these people are all cheating on their spouses and you know abusing their family members and it's like yeah. but don't be gay though you know what i mean like let's ignore everything else in the bible and also being gay in zim is illegal so i was also like really afraid of getting arrested which is not something a, a 12 year old should really normally be worried no. about um, no. i get a lot of people who try to like placate me by saying um actually it's only illegal to have gay sex so it's perfectly legal to be gay and i'm like well i can't really separate the two unless you know i take up the cloth now can i <laughs> and even then that comes with its own problems i suppose to a young child who has been conditioned that you are an evil human being by virtue of being gay it is incredibly scary to then not only admit that to yourself but to admit it to someone you love and look up to because in my mind, I was risking the love and support of my family, which is kind of all I had. And so when I did try to tell my mom, um, I remember I kept on trying to say the words and I couldn't. Um, it was weird. It was like my body was just like taken over by something else. And yeah, was like, it was fear, <laughs> 100%. Yeah. yeah. And even though my dad is like one of the most loving, um, accepting human beings in the world, I still had this irrational fear that he wouldn't love me anymore. Um, and so I told him while he was watching rugby on the couch and he didn't actually say anything. He just put his arm around me and gave me a squeeze and then just carried on watching, which I was like, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to take this, <laughs> but I'm going to go with it. And it was only a few weeks later that my dad actually said to me, the only thing that as a father I want for you is to be happy and to be who you are and I'm, um, and to be brave. And you know, you in telling us and being true to yourself, you've done all of those things, so I'm fine. And I was like, oh, that's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. someone is trying to kill us again. Oh, why, 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 why? Oh, trying to kill me. Got him. Oh my God, someone's like literally right behind you. Oh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, it's fine, I killed him. I killed him, I killed him. Let's talk about abuse that you get online just from like existing <laughs> something even more powerful that's neither ignoring it nor trying to rationalize with the irrational um and that is to make content out of it it's become in a lot of ways um, a form of catharsis but also as a way to educate and empower other queer people on how to deal with abuse and then someone will send me a message um reaching out and saying that something I said really meant a lot to them or yeah. it helped them with something or they learned something. And that means so much to me because it really validates what I do. I don't get of paid course. for what I do. And while genuine appreciation doesn't pay my bills, um, it does pay the rent in my heart. And that's enough for me. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, cute. <laughs> okay, I'm here. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, sh my that's... freaking Watch out, watch out. Ah! Ah! Help me, help me. <laughs> Oh my god, is that your first win? Well done. Thanks, yay, um, I'm so yeah, excited. Yeah, we equally contributed to that. You killed <laughs> his partner and then I, I killed, killed him. And you were like, bah, 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 bah. I was literally John Wick for a amazing. moment. That was amazing, yeah. that was so good. Oh, we're so good. So let's finish it off with uh, how we can contact you. So you're on TikTok. So yeah, I can be found on uh, TikTok, obviously on Twitch on even youtube i don't use youtube as much but i put a lot of really um i put a lot of youtube exclusive content on there um and that's all at nicholas van j uh, i use the same tag for all of those things and thank you for taking the time out of your day to talk to us yeah uh, as it's coming to the end of pride month and uh hopefully giving some people food for thought and maybe making people reconsider the way that they feel or think about certain things so yeah, thank you. Thank you for doing what you do.